Hey YouTube, it's Budget Bug Out, and I'm at SHOT Show 2016 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Stay tuned for new and upcoming products from your favorite survival, tactical, outdoor, and everyday carry companies. Hey YouTube, it's Budget Bug Out. Uh, with the late Boy Scout, I'm here with Shane at the Spyderco booth. We're here with some of the designers of knives as well as Eric himself. So, uh, Shane, if you want to go ahead and uh, take it from here, I'm going to look over your shoulder, so to speak. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some of the knives on the table. It's the new products from Spyderco. All right, budget bug out. Thank you for the intro. And yes, we're here with some of the. Uh Godfathers of Spider Co. <laughs> and uh, checking out some new designs and gonna hear some stories here today. So I thought we'd start with Mr. Bradley. How are you? Good, Ben. Thank you. Awesome. We had a nice uh, chat yesterday, too. Um, I wanted to talk about training knife right here. This is the second uh, folder that uh, we've done in this line. This is the Bradley 2. The structure of the knife and the construction of it is similar to the first one in that it has textured carbon fiber, M4 blade steel, it's a liner lock, has stainless steel liners. Um, we stuck with the same design of having the handle scales smaller than the frame and that gives you a contour without requiring expensive machining. Um, it's got the same pocket clip. The design of the knife is a little sleeker. The handle is thinner cordwise, thinner widthwise. The blade is a little longer, and it's also a little more pointy. The the blade steel is thinner. Overall, it's a little lighter weight but uh, still has the uh, bronze bushing, has a 3 8 uh, stainless steel pivot, uh, has some of the same design qualities, the S curve in the backbone and the, the jimping on the blade. It is uh, saber ground, hollow ground, they ground this one a little thinner. I wanted a little better cutter so the, the edge is a little thinner, which you can't see on the camera. Pick it up a little bit. It's nice though. Uh, what are some of the things that inspired you to make the changes you made? Uh, the other knife was designed without really any consideration to the aesthetics. It was strictly a heavy duty work knife. And this one is actually based on one of my inner frame customs. The, the, the size and the basic profile shape is pretty close to the same, especially in the frame. Yeah. I got it in hand earlier, and it's, it's really nice in hand, really comfortable. Um, I like the size a lot. And, uh, yeah. The, the price is on it. Do you remember what the price is on it? No, I don't. Uh, Eric, do you know what the list is on this thing? Uh, I don't remember on here. It's around $250. Okay. It's actually a little less expensive than the first one. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, could I hold it for a second? Absolutely. Thank you. Like I said, guys, I had it in hand uh, a little bit earlier and um, I'm liking it quite a lot. There's the uh, liner lock on it very deeply and uh, gives a great aesthetic. Overall, it's a very nice looking knife. Uh, and the weight is really not bad at all, in my opinion. So, yeah, big win. I like it a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for talking about it. We got several other knives here, and we don't want to uh, disregard any of them. We got Brad Southern here. Hey How guys. are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Glad to be here. So you've designed a couple knives for Spider Co. Now I've got technically one other design in two different colors okay. that I've done with Spider Co. Now um, pretty excited to have. Uh, just came out like two months ago. And this and is the, the brand new knife called the Positron. So 
A lot of people are calling it the Mini Southern, which is uh, kind of a misnomer because it's in fact a very, very different construction. Uh, it feels completely different in the hand. In almost every way, it's it's different. So what we have here is a solid carbon fiber scales on both sides with a ambidextrous wire clip. And you'll notice that the carbon fiber is fully sculpted in each direction so that you have a lot of comfort in the hand and in the pocket so that it uh, slides in and out of the pocket really nicely but it's also just really comfortable and frankly it looks really freaking cool um, because it's carbon fiber which who doesn't love to be sculpted carbon fiber uh, and then for the blade we decided to go with a S30V full flat grind blade with a really nice thin edge so it's going to have a little bit thinner edge than the previous Southern Flipper so it's going to have a much nicer slicing ability, which is kind of what I was going for with a more of a gentleman's carry, office carry knife that would still get done whatever job you might have it, have it do. It is an inset liner lock, so the liner lock is hidden entirely inside the frame, as well as a skeletonized liner on the other side to provide an extra strength. It is a ball bearing flipper, much like the original Southern, so very quick opening operation. I'll just do that again for fun. And of course it has the spider hole as well for showing that it's a spider hole, although it is not intended to be useful. Although some people have said that you can still use it. Um, so kind of my inspiration behind this knife, uh, it's a basis off of one of my custom models. That's actually a much larger knife, but uh, Eric actually, I showed Eric the original larger knife. And he hinted at, hey, maybe you should try this in a smaller size. So I made a couple prototypes, uh, tried it out in different sizes, and finally settled on on this size knife and sent in the prototype. And now we have this. So very nice. Very nice. So I've uh, I've seen it in pictures. I held it just a little bit today. Thank you. And um, it's uh, it lives up to everything I was expecting. It's light. It's fast. It's, uh, it's small, it's comfortable, and uh, wow, it's, it's really cool to see your designs um, evolving. And honestly, I can't wait to see what else you do. So. Hopefully, we've got some other fun things in the works. Very so, cool. Very cool. I'm excited to see what the future brings. Thanks to Tom, Brad. Thank you. We're also here with Phil Wilson. How are you doing? I'm fine. Great. And the name of your knife we're showing today is? Um, this is called the Spring. And, um, Sprig is a nickname for a pintail duck, and that's we call this a bird and trout knife because of uh, uh, the size and uh, and the use. Uh, this is the second collaboration right now that I have with Spyrico. Uh, the first one was the South Fork, which is a little heavier duty knife, uh, a little larger all around, and the idea is, was to come up with. Uh, with a, another knife that, for lighter use, uh, a little lighter, uh, ground a little bit thinner, and uh, something that could be carried uh, backpacking, uh, picnicking, uh, small game. And so um, it wouldn't be limited to small game. Somebody that's pretty good with a knife could probably take an elk apart with this even. But it does lend itself to lighter use. The handle is a G10, green G10, and that's the same color and about the, in general the same configuration as the sprig, but, but overall smaller. Um, the blade is CPMS 90V, um, very very uh, high uh, vanadium carbide steel. Uh, it is stainless, about 14 pound, and. Um, Again, uh, the heat treat on this steel is critical, and uh, Spyderco has got it figured out, I think, with the maker. And so we're, we're very pleased with the performance. Uh, I've done some cutting tests with it, and uh, it's, it's an excellent cutter uh, due to the hardness of the blade and, uh, and the geometry. Again, it's very thin. So we're hoping um, this will work out very well for small game and even uh, we'll see some use in the kitchen. Uh, very handy little kitchen knife, I think. If somebody wanted to bone out a leg of lamb or a, a turkey breast, I think this would be just perfect for that.
Well, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I'll say that right off the bat. Uh, may I hold it? Sure. Thank you. Um, the, it's striking uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, the the blade, especially with that um, that uh, complete uh, flat ground on it, which is just beautiful. I mean, it looks like it goes all the way down to the terminating edge, and um, so clean, so so polished, so nice uh, in all in all of its lines and all of its uh, contours. I'm really liking it. I think if somebody. Um wanted to buy six of these and put them in a custom hardwood case, they'd have a very nice set of uh, steak knives. <laughs> Maybe a little expensive, but uh, they would be top of the line and it would certainly do the job very well. Very nice. So cool. Thanks for taking the time to chat about that. Now, um, unbelievably, we started off with a few designers here. We've got a few more. Ed Shemp came into the room. How are you doing? Great. Great. Wow, thanks for being here. My pleasure. What did you bring? Uh, this is actually a knife that's brought back into production with the uh, orange handle. Uh, it's special in that this is H1 steel. H1 is a very special steel in that it will not grow. It also work hardens. So as you use and sharpen the knife, it actually gets a little harder by the nature of the chemistry using nitrogen instead of carbon in the Martin Sinek matrix. It's actually rolled from about seven millimeters to three millimeters thick, uh, cold, and under extreme pressure it forms the Martin Sinek matrix. This knife is virtually a shrunk down version of the knife I used in cutting competitions. The blade angles down and aligns with your forearm, so it removes a lot of the activity of the wrist saves the wrist and the hand strength for holding on to the knife. Uh, as you can see, how it lines up when you hold it in a comfortable grip. You're not forced into having to force the, hand, the blade down to get square to whatever you're cutting. Uh, the success in, in rope cutting is due to the fact that my knives purchased whatever they were cutting so that was the big advantage in uh, cutting, but it, it makes it, being ergonomic, it makes it very comfortable to use for extended periods of time. Very nice. Now, I think you said that this is a, an existing design that's in the new steel, is that correct? It's a, no, it, it was actually uh, put out with a black handle and discontinued. So okay, that's what it was. That's what I saw. This would be a scrub run. Wow. Pick it up while you can. Very cool. The name again? Uh, this is the rock salt. The rock salt. The other aspect of having a curved knife is you have rotational torque. And if it's in a reverse grip, I don't have to tip the point forward to get it square to my arm. So if I want to penetrate something, I don't, again, have to flex my wrist to get it into a proper position for a good approach. Well, I get a lot of big advantages to that, uh, to the blade shape and to the angle, obviously. That's, uh, it's, and it's also just overall just very impressive. Thank you. Nicely done. Good chef. Wow. Thanks for joining us. That was so cool. Very well. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sal joined us as well? Oh, I'm just watching. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're here. Well, thanks very much for joining us. And we have a couple other knives Eric wanted to talk about. Uh, sure. I'll go through these. Uh, there's um, five five pieces here, so I'll run through each one. Sure. Oh, six pieces. Um, I guess the first two uh, is an in-house design. Uh, we're calling this one the Mantra, this one the Mantra 2. Uh, many people that are fans of the Delica have been around a long time uh, are going to see some similarities, uh, particularly in the ergonomics of the, the handle and the fit and feel, the size of the knife, very close to a Delica. Uh, this one, though, is going to come with CPM M4. It's a powdered tool steel, keeps a fantastic edge, takes a very thin edge, stays sharp a long time. A little bit, uh, it's not a stainless, so it can corrode, so you have to take care of it. Um, so it's not a highly corrosive steel, but does stay sharp a long time. Has 6AL4V titanium scales. 
a nice radius on the, the side so that it feels good in the hand. It's got a fairly thin blade with that tall bevel so you're going to get a nice slicer. Uh, it's uh, screwed together construction so it's an open back, a large pipe lanyard hole, a deep pocket man, uh, wire clip. It's got a real integrace, a, a reeve integral liner lock with a stainless interface here that is also acts as an over travel stop. Um, it's got ball bearing washers in there so it's going to have great action. The kicker's got a nice little chamfer on the kicker so that it that feels good in the pocket when you're going in and out. And so this is the mantra and then the mantra 2 is the same knife except for we reduce the top. Uh, so it doesn't have the Spyderco round hole open feature, but it does feature the trademark. Um, it has a little bit slightly different tip, but uh, the ergonomics of the handle are the same as the Mantra. So you have the option of a slimmer, a slimmer carry uh, or the more traditional uh, Spyderco with the larger hole. Tell me how the tips differ. Uh, if you were to line them up side by side, you'll see that the tips do have a slightly different location. Okay. So besides that, um, they're very close. We found that this was a nice location for the size and shape of it. It seems like that tip drops just slightly. Yeah, it's a, it drops at the tip a little bit, so you're going to have a little bit stronger tip, but in the use of the knife, it's a little bit higher. Very but, nice. but very similar pieces, uh, mostly just blade differences with the same handle. Show us again how that over travel stop and that interface works. So the, that's, so that's a new thing. I haven't seen that before. It's been done on, on knives for, for a while now. The well, first one I can remember... It also operates as an over travel stop. Yeah, so if you're going to bear down on the titanium here, you're not going to overextend it and bend the titanium so that the lock no longer functions like it was originally supposed to. Right. The first over travel stop that I can remember was on a titanium ATR in the late 90s. We put one on our compression lock to make sure it didn't over travel stop. But uh, it's a nice feature. Now with the stainless, we like the stainless interface there because of that, that constant you know, hitting of the thinner tang on there. Sometimes we'll have a titanium knife that has a thicker blade, maybe a thicker lock, and we won't use the interface. And so we, there's always a balance on whether or not we're going to use the stainless interface or not. I can't remember if you said it says uh, right on ball bearings, right? This does. It's a ball bearing washers nested on, on the inside of both sides which is incredibly smooth as I was playing with it earlier. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy that one. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's very spider that, curl. Yeah, exactly. It's got that spider curl profile to it, uh, that quick and you know, quick deployment with the flipper. And it's, it's, it's pretty beautiful. And the wire clip. I mean, it's, it's pretty much everything that I would ever ask for on a spider curl. So, uh, wicked. Like it. Um, there's a couple other here. Go okay, ahead. so the next one is a collaboration between uh, Walter Grant and Joel Perella. Uh, if you know the two custom knife makers, you're going to see where some of the flair came from. Walter Grant uh, is where you'll see a lot of that blade. He's known for nice, big, sweeping blades, beautiful grinds, great polishes. I've uh, been doing it a long time. So it's a, a very nice Walter Grant uh, blade design. Then you're going to see a, a lot of characteristics that Joel Perella puts in his handles. Nice three-dimensional scales, uh, some holes in the back. It's got a great guard in the front for forward push cutting, great hook at the back for pull cutting. Um, it feels great in the hand. It's 3D uh, machined with very good quality carbon fiber so that you're not going to see any voids in there. It's got full titanium liners that are skeletonized along with a G10 backspacer. It does have ball bearings in there so that the action is very smooth. The trademark hole also works very well. Uh, it comes with a coating on the blade, and you'll see it's a little darker on the main bevel, a little lighter on the flat. The reason we put the coating on there is because Walter Brand is known for his high polishes. But because we used an S30V in this knife, the S30V doesn't take the bright uh, mirror polish, so we added the coating to give it some of that Walter Brand flair. Oh, very nice. Very cool. So this is the Mamba. The Mamba. Big bad Mamba. I like it. Um, the next knife I'm going to quickly discuss, we're calling the Little Lum, uh, L-I-L apostrophe Lum. Um, it's going to be the same as many of the larger Chinese folders that we've done of his designs in the past, except for it's much smaller. 
Um, he, we did have a larger one that had about a four inch blade, then we did a mid-size one, and then this is the smallest. VG10 blade, full liners, open construction, uh, skeletonized, reversible clip, peel ply G10, uh, lanyard hole, just a nice classic um, Spyderco in its quality and design. We're really happy to get to work on another Chinese folder uh, that, that Lum got to design. Can I get that in hand? Yeah, sure. Um, it's uh, very reminiscent as far as size is concerned of, of your Dragonfly and other, other knives in that same range um, and probably going to fit into that same sort of role. Uh, very nice in hand for the size that it is and what is it, like two a little over two inches I think. Yeah probably about two catalog. and a half inches maybe. Yeah I was looking at the catalog it seemed like it was two to two and a half. Very functional you know when you're making small folders that clip carry one hand open functional lock all those things become more difficult as the knife gets smaller. Yeah. Uh, so Lum uh, did a fantastic job of executing a nice gents folder very functional in a small package. I love it. Yep. Very cool, very cool. Is that going to be more budget friendly as well? The, uh, the, 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 the low, the low know, lump? It doesn't have carbon fiber. Wife, wife friendly, CDP, wife friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, the G10 sure. and the VG10 does make it a little more friendly for the budget. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Then I got two more quickly. Uh, one we've had out for a little while, it's called the Zabo Hawk, uh, designed by Lossy Zabo. More of an urban tactical type um, tomahawk. Uh, this one's got a, a modified Tonto, if you will, type of, of front. It's gonna be very strong for penetration. It's got a very um, steep bevel so that, that uh, it's gonna be strong for, for impact. It's got a nice hammer at the back. Uh, one of the features that we worked very hard on this is this very smooth, perfect fit and finish. Thick G10 with some curve, so that if you're handling it for a long period of time or working with it, it doesn't have a lot of hot spots. It's got large, big screws to hold it together. It's got a nice crowbar at the back so you can get in there and work something apart. It's got two large holes here so that you can make attachments and use this as one large handle. Um, it's got a nice Kydex sheath that uh, just pops in, pops out, keeps it safe. Um, and uh, we're really happy with this tool. It's a large piece of D2, yeah. too. Just one solid, mm. thick piece of D2. Very yeah. tough. Wow. Uh, nice black coating. Um, very high quality piece. Uh, getting it in hand, that's kind of the feeling I got uh, with it, is that it's, 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 it's super heavy, guys. But it's going to be extremely uh, hard working as well. Uh, just one question. Which of these two holes counts as the trademark spider hole? It would be that one. Oh, okay. This is, this is, this is. Location, you know, is important for our trademark. All right. Cool. But, the, you know, the weight is nice, though. If you're trying to get entry through a door, you're trying to, you know, pry something apart, having a little yeah. bit of weight is yeah. a yeah. nice thing. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Sure. Very, very cool. And you're right about the rounding and the sculpting on that. It's going to be good in hand for long periods of time. Doing hard, damaging work. Nice. And then the next one's a bit of an early preview, if you will. Uh, won't be out for probably another five or six months. Uh, but we're reintroducing the ATR. It was an, a knife that we originally made in, in America with a, a 6AL4V titanium interface compression. Uh, but this one's going to be uh, peel ply G10, full liners that are skeletonized, uh, nice reversible clip, still has your holes so that you can index and, and reduce the weight. Still has a nice cobra hood so that it uses a better purchase for your opening, gives you better purchase for your thumb. Uh, it's got this nice swedge so that the grind line goes all the way out to the tip uh, so that you have a nice strong tip for use but also lightweight with the way it's beveled and the material is reduced at the top. Got a nice forefinger choil so you can choke up or you can get back on it. The front guard, the back guard, the lanyard hole. Uh, one of the nice features about this though is this will be made in CPM S30V but also made in Japan. Wow. Um, so we're excited to get some of this nice American powdered metals into some of our Japanese made products as well. Very nice. Uh, but we're, we're excited to bring back the ATR. For some people it's uh, a knife that they've been wanting to see come back for some time. And a lot of the reason we're doing it is based on requests. 
And uh, forgive me, did you mention that it has the compression lock on it? It does. Uh, it does have that compression. I maybe didn't mention it, but if you're not aware of the compression, it adds a piece of metal between this stop pin and this pivot. It acts similar to a liner lock that it comes in from the side, but because that pin is backing up that lock, the strength is, is, is much yeah. much more in, advanced than, than the liner. standard liner. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed that many times with my paramilitary too, also carrying the same lock. It's uh, just incredibly tough. Very nice to see. Super cool. Wow, uh, I don't know how to end this video. <laughs> I'm kind of blown away. Thanks for coming and supporting us and, and doing this, guys. You oh, know, we do it you. all for, for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. The, uh, the Godfathers of Spider Coat came down from Mount Olympus to do a video with us. <laughs> We're pretty lucky. Thanks very much, you guys. It's Thank a you. late voice got behind the camera and budget bug out as well at the Spider Coat booth. Shot Show 2016. Thanks for watching. Thank you.